the SARS-CoV-2 virus is two-faced. On the one hand, people die from it. On the other hand, a large number of people have no symptoms whatsoever and seemingly aren't even aware that they've got it. Let's explore what we know about asymptomatic individuals in this episode of Shareable Science Beyond the Blog. Welcome to Shareable Science. Science you can share. A recent medical journal published an editorial that described asymptomatic individuals as the Achilles heel in our current attempt to control the spread of COVID-19. What's the difference between symptomatic, presymptomatic, and asymptomatic, and, and, and why is that even an issue? Let's look at two different examples. This is an individual who is, is exposed to the virus, becomes infected, and after some period of time develops symptoms. They're infectious during this window, even when they have no symptoms at all. This person is pre-symptomatic in this window and then develops symptoms. Now compare that to this individual who's exposed and is infectious, but never develops any outwardly apparent signs of the disease. They are an asymptomatic individual. They never develop symptoms. Here's a tricky part. If I tested both these individuals at, say, day five, at that moment, they would both test positive, and neither one of them would have symptoms. But this person is truly pre-symptomatic, and this person is asymptomatic. In order to know that difference, I have to follow them up to say, did you develop symptoms, or did you never have symptoms? And that is a hint at one of the real challenges in trying to better understand asymptomatic infection with COVID-19. There are not a lot of really well-designed studies where you can look at an entire population and follow it pre-infection, pre-exposure, all the way through the resolution of symptoms and infection. So the data that we're going to talk about are imperfect at best, but they're what we got. So let's start with how many people are actually asymptomatic? What's our best guess? And to do that, I've just got a general pyramid here. I don't want you to focus on the specific number of dots or the, the, the size, but I want you to recognize that as we move down, we are moving from people that are incredibly ill to people that have less and less symptoms to people in green that are asymptomatic. Now, these individuals, these people get sick, sometimes seriously sick. And we don't have a good sense of how long it takes them to fully resolve their symptoms. There are some hints that people may have symptoms, some percentage of these individuals may be ill and have long-term effects. So I don't want you just to focus on this one red dot. None of these upper areas are where we wanna be. And everything we can do to try to reduce the spread, reduce these numbers of individuals is important. That said, the data suggest that somewhere between 20 and 60% of individuals that are infected may be asymptomatic. 20 to 60 is a huge range. The data somewhere land somewhere, best guess, around 45%. So 45% of people that are infected may never have any visible symptoms. They may never be aware of, of being infected. And you would only detect them if they went in for testing because they happened to be exposed to someone, they knowingly were exposed to someone who had COVID, so they came in to get a test, or they were part of one of these larger studies trying to look across the population. All right, with that in mind, let's look at some basic questions. Are asymptomatic individuals infectious? Yes. So even if they don't realize they have symptoms, they can pass the infection on to someone else. And an asymptomatic person doesn't necessarily pass asymptomatic COVID on to someone else. They could actually pass the virus on and the person they pass it to could become seriously sick, could pass away. So that's the challenge. That's where the Achilles heel is. People that don't know they're infectious can make other people sick. That's why you hear people talk about it. That's why you hear us talk about the importance of washing your hands and keeping a distance and wearing a mask. 
There's some data that suggests that asymptomatic people might be infectious even longer than symptomatic individuals. It's a small study. We need some additional data, but I just want to put it out there. Okay, do asymptomatic individuals produce antibodies? Is there an immune response? Would they be protected from a future reinfection? Yes, they are producing antibodies, and they seem to be producing the antibodies that we want them to produce, the neutralizing antibodies. Again, it's a small study, but a small study of a group of individuals from Asia found that potentially asymptomatic individuals produced a weaker antibody response. It lasted or it, it, it seemed to drop off more rapidly than symptomatic individuals. We don't yet know what this means. We don't know what that means for long-term immunity, but we're gonna say yes with, a, with an asterisk. Are there any hidden symptoms? Are asymptomatic people really asymptomatic? Mm, we're gonna say maybe. Because if you take blood work from asymptomatic individuals, or if you do a CT scan of their chest, in many cases, not all, you actually find altered levels of blood enzymes or even mild inflammation in the lungs. In some cases, it's the level of inflammation you would find from someone who has walking pneumonia. So while they may have no visible symptoms, the virus may be still causing damage, likely short term, but we don't know, inside their body. And then the $64,000 question, why? Are some people asymptomatic and other people incredibly ill? That's what we don't know. Some of that probably um, in, uh, is due to our immune system and how well our immune system detects and responds to infectious agents. We know that for flu, there are asymptomatic individuals as well, but we don't have a lot of data either for flu or for COVID-19. So that's what we know right now. The data are continuing to change and more of those imperfect studies will still come in to provide us additional information. If you know someone who you think would find this interesting, please share this video with them. I look forward to seeing you on our next episode of Shareable Science Beyond the Blog. Thanks for watching and take care.